This episode of Small Town Western New York was made possible by the following supporters. On this episode of Small Town Western New York, I'm taking a day trip to the western side of the town of Elma, to a place a lot of us don't even realize we're driving through when we're passing through it. I'm taking a day trip to the hamlet of Springbrook. Springbrook is a place that holds a lot of special memories for me, as I spent many a day here in the creek and the woods surrounding it in all seasons, especially in summer, when we would wade and play in the water and swim at the base of the falls in the deep pools, as well as ride inside of the smooth, shallow trenches that centuries of strong currents had eroded into the creek bed that essentially turned it into a series of natural water slides, and all with somewhat dangerous drop-offs at their abrupt ends only a few hundred yards downstream. But it was the 70s and 80s, and that's just what you did back then to pass the time on a hot day. As I grew older, these memories only turned more sentimental. And when I moved back to the region in 2014, I would sometimes take a drive through the place. And I'd always notice there was thankfully a lot of impressive and continual redevelopment happening here. One building would get a makeover and a few months later, it seemed another one would begin. One by one, this little place was getting a huge facelift and a repurposing that included a truly beautiful and perfectly placed new park that sits perched high above the creek with the very brook that the hamlet is named after meandering right along its borders, heading to a precarious fall to join the waters of the creek below. A lot of what's been happening in Springbrook over the last few years is a great example of how to correctly reimagine and redevelop an older place like this with just the right amount of care towards its past while building a better future. I did some digging for this episode, and I found out that this incredible work was being done by a local family who owned and operated a development company based right in Springbrook, and I thought that would be a pretty good place to start my day trip. Well, you know, it, it, uh, uh, I really enjoy the historical aspect and the historical um, uh, committee from Elma. They're great people they do a lot for the for the community and uh, so you know but I always joke with them because um, like even when we were fortunate to buy the Springbrook Hotel um, she had given me this picture and she said Todd look at that and it was a picture of the, of, uh, the Springbrook Hotel from the turn of the century and uh, <clears throat> And she described the picture to me, and I said, well, do you, do you see anything else in that picture? And she said, well, I, I see a, a nice building and this, that, and the other thing. And she kind of described what she was looking at. And I said, well, if you want to know what I see, I'll tell you. I said, I see a building that, that has rolled roofing on the front porch because they didn't have enough money to be able to do it right and I see this and I see that and then if you look in the, the bottom left hand corner there you'll see a sign that says for sale I said so it wasn't it wasn't doing it back then you know and and so but but I understand the you know the importance of history and and, and her point was to me was she wanted to recapture or have someone recapture that look right. and uh, so I wanted to capture not only that look but but truly improve it to where it should have been or could have been and, and would be today yeah and even like the the overhang you know where we put the you know where the cars can pull yeah. up and it's covered and everything that's where they used to pull up with the carriages um, oh, wow. to then, yeah, because we had to fill the whole lot because they used to pull up with the carriages and then it was at the same level uh, as the carriages and people would just walk right off oh, into oh, the, I see, I see, so right, right. step. So step was right. Level with right. The so to keep was. that same right. kind of idea, <laughs> right. just modernized it to, you know, an actual <laughs> pull, pull. During my time with Todd and his son, they gave me a special tip to call Fred Streif, one of the very few people in the area that knows about Springbrook's history, to show me a few spots where things began here so long ago. This, uh, this area here was a great, uh, great uh, spring, and it was named uh, uh, the same as a, uh, the village's name is Springbrook. It originated Daniel Tugons had this little spring here 
that would water cattle, water horses, and for people on their way from Holland, Wales, East Aurora, on their way to uh, Springbrook. He also had a, a bar and hotel that people could stay at. And through the 18, 1834 is when he opened this this uh, this bar and uh, house to stay in, and it was called the Mouse's Nest. And in 1850, this excuse me, 1846, this Seneca Street or the Aurora Plank Road was planked, and people could take heavy loads of lumber, and it was a major thoroughfare through through Springbrook into Buffalo. After Fred showed me the spring and explained its history, he then took me back up the road to the spot where Northrop meets Seneca Street to show me Lewis Northrop's home. He was a pioneer in the area that really changed the face of the hamlet. Lewis Northrop moved here in 1846 uh, along the Buffalo Plank Road to this area put a road in down to the Casanova Creek and built a mill down there, a sawmill, and also a grist mill. The reason he built that is because it used to be a great white pine forest, and there was a lot of virgin uh, timber here that could be sawed and sawed up and shipped to Buffalo. And they claim half of Buffalo is built out of the white pine that came from the anywhere between Holland, Wales, and uh, Alma. For most of us, Springbrook has simply been a pass-through to East Aurora and all parts south down Seneca Street. But now, after a few good years of reimagining, repurposing, and redevelopment, it's finding its way back to a rightfully proud place in Western New York's very bright future. This little bee pollock area that sat right on the Indian Trail, Turnplank Road, had its own burgeoning frontier population of 300. The early recorded history of spring work begins right after 1842, when the last portions of the Buffalo Creek Seneca Indian Reservation were sold to the Ogden Land Company for just $2.14 an acre. This episode of Small Town Western New York was made possible by the following supporters.